Hey, listen up. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's gone into this game. I have been teaching music uh, and ear training for a long, long time. I've taught elementary school kids, kindergartners using the Kodai pedagogy, for those of you who are into that world. And in the at the college level, at the Osher School of Music in Portland or Gorham, Maine. Mm -hmm. So I've done a lot of ear training. And not only that, but in my own journey, I've done a lot of ear training on myself. In fact, I started as a terrible with a terrible ear. Uh, when I got to music school in college, I didn't know what I was doing. I did not have good ear training in high school. And uh, I just had some cassettes that I listened to that my teacher gave me. And there really wasn't much going on for me. And part of that was that my teachers back then, they all had naturally good ears. So they didn't have to walk through all the challenges. Since I started with a not very strong ear, I went and I sought great ear training. And so I had the good fortune of working with Bruce Eicher at, in Baltimore, who taught at the Peabody School. And he studied with Nadia Boulanger, and he got great tips for me. Then when I was working at Starbucks in Cambridge, Massachusetts, I walked around with cassettes in my ear. The David L. Burge Relative Pitch Training Course was fabulous for my interval hearing. Then I went to the New England Conservatory where I did a whole bunch of jazz and what they called contemporary improv ear training or third stream ear training, working on personal style, listening to musicians that I loved and getting deeper into them. Uh, and also at the same time, I learned about Kodai, which is the Hungarian composer, his method for teaching elementary school kids. And that really got me excited about solfege. And solfege is the centuries old system of associating a very simple word, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, with a note in the scale. And through learning solfege and doing more things than just playing a game, singing known repertoire in solfege from memory, singing patterns in solfege from memory, and sight singing, and learning songs that you know already by ear, those things apply and you can combine those with playing tone hole to develop your ear. Anyway, I made this game and put a lot of what I learned into the game so that you can develop a keen, keen musical ear so that you can play music from memory easily, so that you can memorize music by hearing it, so that you can hear music in your mind by looking at it on the page and hopefully, ultimately, developing your own personal style. And if you're not a musician and you just like listening to music, you'll find that developing your musical ear makes listening to music so much richer. It's like getting yourself your own color TV mind of listening. Okay, so what have I put in here? Well, you see that there's the solfege, and there's also the gradual, 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 gradual development of difficulty. Now, earlier, I talked about the three stages, the three levels, warm up, associating color to color, as well as sound to sound, practice, no color to sound, and then challenge, totally internalizing the sounds. Now I'll tell you a little bit about some of the other things that are gonna make it easy for you and fun. So looking here at the menu of levels, we've got the first few levels, just compare two notes, either do to re or do to t, right? That's all you need to start with. Those first six levels may very well give you plenty of fun time for a while. And notice that there's a line connecting the do to the t. That's because do can only be followed by t, t can only be followed by do. And it's these connections, the movement of the melody from one note to another, that's where the sum of the difficulty starts to come in. You'll see in a second. So we add one note very gradually, but not just a note. We also add the connection between the notes. So as we go to Do, Re, and Mi, you'll see that Do can follow or can be followed by Re and the other way around. And Re can be followed by Mi. Those are all neighbors, but Mi will not skip to do on this level. So really, 
it's kind of like playing a very basic level because you're just going from one note to its neighbor. Simple. But before long, we add the connection between Do and Mi. And here, we can go Do to Re, Re to Mi, and Mi to Do, and back and forth. But that's not all. We gradually build up the scale so that pretty soon you've got a level where you've got Do all the way to So. Now notice, you might notice that it's in a different key, right? Do is in a different place. Do is not always the same note on the piano keyboard. It doesn't always have the same frequency. Sometimes Do is a C, sometimes Do is an F. Now, if you live in Latin America or in certain parts of Europe or Israel or the other parts of the Middle East, you may think that Do is always C. And that's true for that system. But what we use here within this game is called movable Do. So Do always has the sound of the home note. Now notice that Do is only followed by Re. Re is only followed by Mi. Mi is only followed by Fa. Fa is only followed by So. And so on. I'll play this, uh, this level real quick for you so you can see how that works. And that was pretty easy. And as you're watching, you're probably noticing that I'm just doing a color to a color. And if you watch the earlier part, you'll know that that's because it's a warm up level. Nonetheless, you see that those connections are very simple. All I'm thinking is up, down, or same. And in my head, and in your actual voice, you might want to go, do, re, mi, like sing it as you go, because the mind is the connection. Sing it as you go, because the voice is the connection between the ear and the mind. I think I've said that before. Okay, so now we're going to add different things. Now, because you're getting the sense for music, you might want to notice that there are some levels that focus on certain patterns. Like in this level, we got do, do, mi, so, right? Do, mi, so. And that is the tonic triad. That's all the notes in the one chord. So it's very useful to become very con conversant in the sounds of that chord or that pattern. Okay, keep going. And before you know it, you've got more scale notes and more different little chord patterns. Okay, so we focus on each one of these. So here we've got the do, do, mi, so chord along with the Re Fa La. And that's a fun one. I like that. <clears throat> Those of you who know me know how much I like that pattern. In fact, sometimes I think I like it a little too much. So as you get more and more advanced, we start to isolate certain other patterns. For example, in this one, we focus on connecting Do to three other notes. and so on, right? So we really get a sense for do, ti, do, la, do, so, do, which is very handy. But also what's interesting is, as we start to isolate other notes in the scale in that way, we start to have some very interesting resulting sounds. Like check this one out. This one, what is this, level 87. Level 87, here's a challenge level. Notice, that everything is kind of coming and going kind of from me. So that's going to have a certain quality that's worth checking out.
and so on. Yeah, so on and so on. So we get a real quality of me as it moves back and forward to different notes in the scale. Okay, well, that's enough of that for now. So now you have a sense for how tone hole gets more and more difficult, starting still very easy, two notes comparing, all the way up to not just seven notes comparing, but eight notes comparing with all sorts of different uh, combinations to get this ear automatic. Listen up and have a great time.